This is Tony from Six Stream Corner, and I am back, and I am here ready to teach you and show you something. I'm just checking my cameras here, making sure we're all good. Um, how y'all doing out there in uh, land of music, in uh, YouTube and Facebook? Uh, glad to have you back. Um, I've been uh, away for a couple of weeks doing some camping. Got some more camping coming up soon. And um, so, you know, kind of uh, it's that summer schedule is kind of hit and miss. I'm usually on Wednesdays. Today I'm on Thursday. And uh, here I am, am with you to uh, show you some stuff on guitar. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to change my camera here. So give me one second here and we're going to get started. All right, there we go. All right. There we go. That's a little bit better. All right. So, how you doing? Uh, we're going to do get it right down to it. We are going to do a couple of great classic rock riffs. This is all about riffs. This is all about rock riffs. And uh, the king of riffs, or one of the kings of riffs, being uh, Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of licks here to play, to learn, uh, if you haven't learned it already. I do have tabs for these. Um, and the tabs are located in the Six Stream Corner Library. You sign up for it. Um, you'll see it down in the description below, and it'll get you in, and you will see these two tabs, and you will see a whole bunch more. And it's always we're always adding on into it. So, um, hey Scott, how you doing? You're messing with your rigs. I know how that feeling goes. Uh, Kempers and fractals are quite the quite the thing. Um, but um, uh, right now, and matter of fact, I might as well let you know what I'm using. I'm, us I'm using a Marshall uh, Silver Jubilee. It's, I'm using a Kemper Profiler with a Marshall uh, Silver Jubilee. I figured uh, it's not exactly what Hen with uh, Hendrix, <laughs> which Jimmy Page used. He did, uh, but uh, he did have the Marshalls at one point, uh, most of the points. And um, so this is the best uh, one that I like. So I'm going to use it. It's by uh, Michael Britt. So if you guys have Kemper's. Um, that's what I'm using. It's a Marshall Silver. It's 1.7 is his coating, uh, Brit's coating. And then I have a Fractal FX8. Uh, not much going on here, just a little bit of overdrive distortion. And um, that's it. Although we're probably not going to even get much into that because both of these licks don't really uh, need a lot of it. But uh, nonetheless, I'm going to show you how it's all done. All right. So yeah, Six String Corner Library is down below. Um, so click that for the tabs. Um, also, if you are wanting to progress and learn more on your guitar and uh, need some instructor and don't want to travel um, for it uh, because there's uh, health reasons I know out there in some places and uh, maybe you just don't want to leave the house and just want to learn from home. Well, I've been finding out that it's been going working out really well learning from home uh, for online lessons. I use Zoom. So um, I'm thinking most of you have used Zoom, uh, if not all, at some point over these last several months. It's kind of been a thing for communication. So it works really well for lessons. You're able to record the whole lesson or parts of it, depending on how you want to do it. Uh, we're able to share screens. I have folders that I share with you guys. So it's it's really quite interactive, more much more interactive than you might think. And um, so look for that online lesson uh, 
idea if that's something that you're looking for. How are you doing, Sean? Um, so, and if you are watching, I want to also welcome those of you who are watching this after the today. Um, this is uh, August, what are we today? August 13th, right? August 13th. Uh, so if you're watching this after August 13th, I want to welcome you also. Um, and um, hopefully you'll get something out of this lesson. I'm going to quit talking a little bit here, but I want to thank you for showing up too. Um, uh, if you've got any questions uh, during the lesson, uh, if you're live, or even if you're watching this later, uh, just leave a comment. Um, just give me a question or something that you need to know. If there's something that you want to learn in the future, I'm open to it. I'm always open to new ideas as I do these line less, outline lessons. I love doing these things. These are a lot of fun. I, I When I first did them, they were kind of a little weird for me, but um, I've gotten used to them, and I do have a lot of fun. So uh, thanks again for joining me on Facebook and on YouTube. And, uh, well, we're going to get right down to it. How's that? So um, – I'm going to deal with the relatively easier one. Um, they're both uh, going to involve a little bit of skill that may, hopefully you already know. Um, I know with Black Dog, which is going to be the second one I'm going to cover, it's going to require a little bit of pull off hammer on. Yeah, going to a little hammer on and pull off on that one. Um, Heartbreaker is going to is going to also require a little bit of um, a little bit of uh, like bending, um, and there's going to be uh, so. What, what, but that's kind of the easier one. So let's get started with it. All right, enough talking, and let's start rocking. All right. So what I'm going to do here, uh, I'm going to play it, uh, play Heartbreaker, and then uh, we're going to kind of shift the screens a little bit. I do have the tab, and I'll put the tab on the screen as we go along. So trying something a little bit different. Let me know if this works for you. If it doesn't, please let me know, and I will change the screens if you need to see more guitar or you need to see less of the tabs, that's fine. Just let me know because, um, like I said, I'm sort of experimenting on this a little bit to see uh, see what works for you all, okay? So just trying to help you all out. All right, so Heartbreaker. Um, really what that this riff is, it just centers around the same uh, pattern. <laughs> all right, I think we got my – should probably take that. Uh, let me say, I'm going to move this over a little bit so you guys can see it. This has got my, uh, there you go, 16 corner live lessons getting in the way. All right, so um, this is, here we go. All That's in essence the the riff, um, and uh, let me go over that real quickly with you. Um, now I'm going to put down the tab along with me. I shrink down a little bit. So this is the tab that you'll get. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's try this. Maybe this will be better. You let me know if this is too small. If it is, please let me know, and I will make it bigger. Like I said, I'm experimenting a little bit with this. Want to see what works for y'all? Uh, if it doesn't, tell me. If it's good, give me a thumbs up, or uh, it's all good. So uh, in Heartbreaker. Um, what we have here is, uh, let me go a larger one here. So these are the tabs here. If when, uh, when you see this, you see this little thing here, this little arrow up, if you've never seen that before, that's a bend. All right. Right. Like that. And, um, we'll just follow along the tab, uh, with that or just like that. Okay. And that's what that, that's what that, uh, that's what that means. Okay. All right. So let me go back to the original and we're going to go back and forth. And I'm going to give you a close-up with the camera. All right. So here we go. So on the right hand, first of all, before we get started, uh, we're going to cover the, this one quickly. Um, when you're when you're doing your picking your notes, try to keep your hand uh, loosely uh, aligned with the bridge, on the bridge here, the heel of your hand. And um, kind of make sure that pick is twisted just a little bit. Uh, don't, don't hit it with the flat of the pick. You want to have it a little bit twisted like that as you go up and down on the string. Okay, so up and down on the string. And um, I'll, I'll just show you the right hand. Uh, there's not much to know here other than you're just going to be picking. That. You hear that? Da -da. I'm doing it down up. And that's the only time you're going to see me picking up. All right, that's the only time you'll see that, da that down up motion. Other than that, everything is down picked. Okay. All right. Now let's go to the left hand. 
where all the fun is. All right, so this one is basically in A. Um, it's working off that A string, and then it's going to work off the B note on the A string, okay? And your, your fingering is going to be different both times. Both ways is going to be a little bit different, okay? So um, let's start with the A, where we're using the open strings a little bit, all right? So uh, the fingering is really important, too, um, on which fingers play what. So I try to, when I do this one, I have, um, it's kind of like you assign a finger to a fret. And we're going to be in the first position. Any notes that are played on that first fret, and then it'll be brief, but it'll be a pointer finger. Um, the middle finger will cover second fret, and the ring finger is going to cover whatever on the third fret. Of course, obviously, the open, you're not going to do it. Now, when we do the, the next section, it's going to be it's going to look different. Okay, so we got two different ways we're going to do two different um, ways we're going to be playing this. Okay, so now the first one we start on the open A. I think actually. Yeah, I'm sorry. My bad. He start, I think he starts on the on the pull. So that's a little bit of a pull on that third fret on the uh, lowest uh, e, on the E string. And then you just you bend right into the A string. Just like that. All right. And then after that, you're going to go to the ring finger on the C note, third fret, and the A string here. And then you're going to go to open D string and then those two notes go quicker all right they're more like eighth i think they're more like eighth beat all right and then you go back to the bend and you start over so watch this and then when you come back to it again you pick this a here, the A string, twice. All right, so if I put those two together, So it just repeats. It's just the second time you play that open A string, it's da 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 da. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, it's one, two, three. So, but you start with the bend, you do just do a little pull. It's like kind of like almost like you're pulling into the note. So you don't want to you want to pull it, you don't want to pull it really super hard, and you don't want to pull it really super light, like like timidly. You just it's almost like you're just pulling into that note. Like you want to and you release that note once you get to that A. Now, I will tell you that when I do this, now what I do is here, this thumb here, this is kind of a little important thing, especially for some of you beginners, is when you bend, you don't want that E string to keep ringing, right? Right, that sounds really ugly. So what we do is I bend. I'm touching the side of that to keep it muted. I could also do the same thing with my right hand to mute that. Um, I just find it, for this riff at least, easier just to do it with my left, with my thumb. But if you went on your right, you could mute this uh, string here and just kind of bring your hand over to mute it. To me, that's a little more difficult, but I know people that find that a little bit easier. You know, honestly, with the muting, whichever way works, that's the bottom line. But just keep be cognizant and be aware of this string ringing. You, after you do that pull, you don't want that string to ring anymore. <laughs> So that's just what I do, just so I can knock that knock that note out. And there's a little bit. I think there's also a tiny little bend here. I'm not, you know, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. So if I'm if I'm screwed up, this wouldn't be the first time. But there's a little bit of that's a like a tiny bend here on this C too. Just a little, really slight bend um, in there. I, it just seems that it works. All right, so that goes, um, uh, well, depending on where you are in the song, um, that goes, you know, like four, I think it goes two sets or one, one four times. All right, that's one. That's two. And then you do it again. You repeat that, three, four. Um, and then um, you're going to also, now what it does is then it moves over to the B note, okay? Which this is the B note here as being the root note. So basically he's going to take this whole riff 
and this whole riff just moves up what's called a whole step. We're going to go up uh, essentially to frets, but since we don't really use, uh, well, we could use an open string in here, but I find it easier not to. Uh, we're going to be using this little finger here, and you're going to you're going to after you uh, do the final one. All right, so now you're here to this B note. That's the second note here on the A string. And now it's going to look a little different, all right? Now our finger position is going to change. Same thing is we're going to be on what's called the second position. So all the notes on the second fret are covered by the pointer finger. This one takes the third fret, middle. This one here takes the uh, fourth fret, and this one takes the fifth fret. And we are going to use that one, all right? So, and there's going to be a little bit of stretch on this left, on this, uh, this pinky finger. So you're going to get a little pinky workout. So if you're not used to pinky workouts, this one might be one that might help you out just a little bit. All right. So, uh, so the riff, uh, the, the, the rhythm, the, the way it moves is the same. We're just going to be, our fingering is going to change. So now if we go to this second position, this uh, second position, <laughs> Right? So uh, it looks, sounds the same, it's just everything's up, but we're going to be using, uh, not using open strings. So here we go. So we're going to have the pointer finger on the second fret. And then now we have the option. I could go. All right. I could use, I could use the open string. I, for me, it's just more, it feels more natural to do, put my little finger here on this D rather than the open D. But hey, if the open D works for better for you, knock it out, man. Go for it. Um, I like keeping it this way because later I'm going to have to go to this A note and I'm going to have to bend it. So I just like to keep my hand. I'm all about efficiency. I like to keep my hand kind of in the same place, right? Uh, not move it around too much. Um, it For me, it, I just play better that way. So, you know, if you like moving your hand around and stuff, I, I don't advise it. But if that works for you, go for it. But um, so I play the B here, second fret. And then the D here on the fifth fret. And then we're going to go to the second fret on the, on the D string, on this fourth string. And we play just like we did before, only now we're using, using those three fingers, just like that. So. All right, now from here, you got to get this little bend. Remember, we were doing that bend off the G. Now we got to bend this A note. This we're going to step up. So you're going to do that with your little finger. See, how I did it. All right, now, how do I mute that too, right? Well, I, I do this little thing, and it just it works for me. Is if you see how I'm pressing this note down, wait, get a little closer there. See the tip of my finger? I'm touching the side of that note. I kill that the sound of that note the minute I come to this note. Works for me, okay? All right, again, if you want to mute that with your right hand, go for it. But um, on the left hand, that's what I do is I mute that low E string just playing it right here. So, um, but it's going to require, if you're not used to this, you're going to have to stretch your finger out. Now, you got to keep your hand and your thumb pretty much where it is because you got to come right back to this note. So you don't want to be flopping your hand around a little bit. So. And now the right hand picking is the same. That hasn't changed. In, in essence, if you just watch the right hand, you wouldn't see a change from what I was doing uh, to begin with to here. It's the same. The right hand is doing the same thing. It's the left hand that's doing... All right. Now that goes really short. Uh, so it goes one time. All right. And you go back to the uh, A and it starts. All right. You go back to that note and you, you repeat what you did the first time on the A, on the A part. And then you close that with an A chord. All right. So putting that all together, uh, it's, it goes like this. I'll probably shorten the A part a little bit um, just so you can get the idea on um, the transition. All right. So this will be edited just a little bit in how I play it. <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> I messed it up. Uh. Well, that's a massive fail right there. Um. It always works better when you play these fast. When you slow them down, man, it's it, it's really can be super, super hard. Um, so, again, I have these tabs. Uh, this tab is on um, is on uh, um, on the 16 Corner Cab Library. So it's basically what I just showed you right here um, with the B. There's that A part that we just did. You do it four times. You do that B part twice, and then you're back to the um, A part. OK, and then you go into the A chord, uh, which closes that out and it gets into the thing down, down, down. It's actually a lot of bass in there. There's really not a lot. After you go past that, it's there's just uh, some D.A. thing, but it's really a lot of, um, uh, you know, a lot of bass is playing in that. But uh, anyway, this is the cool riff. This is the one I wanted to show. And I got this tab. It is on uh, the 16 quarter library. So you go ahead and. Uh, grab that down there. You sign into the library, and um, you got this and a whole bunch of other tabs in there. All right. So that, my friends, is Heartbreaker. All right. Uh, hopefully that worked out for you. So um, we're going to go on to the next one, which is uh, Black Dog. Black Dog. Oh, my gosh. We're going to have a Black Dog. All right. Black Dog right here. Um, so let me get this set up. And again, here is the, um, that looks kind of funky on my screen. I don't know how that looks on your screen. It looks kind of funky on mine. Um, but uh, it, uh, trust me, the, the, the PDF is fine. I, I don't know. Something's wrong here. But anyway, uh, this gives you the order of the notes, okay? And, um, you know, uh, taking it all the way through. We're going we're gonna to cover uh, the main part right here, um, right here, okay? And this is the part. So let me play it for you. And let me get back to the main screen. All right. So here it is, Black Dog. I'm going to take it slow. All right. Not much, really. I mean, once you get down to it, it just sounds cool. So there's going to be some pull-off hammer-ons. So hopefully you got your pull-off hammer-ons figured out. If you don't, um, I'd start to work on them. Um, you know, just a little side note, if you're working on pull-off hammer-ons, um, one really quick, I'm going to give you a real like 30-second exercise you can do with this. And you can start slow. Is you take, go on the G string right here. Um, this is probably a good spot, fifth, seventh fret on the G string. And you can pick the note, just pick it one. <laughs> You're hammering and you're pulling off with your ring finger. So you get a hammer on and then a pull off. And you can work with the, the strength on your uh, ring finger to do that. Just go nice and really slow. It, it, if you're not used to it, it's going to be kind of tough in the beginning. But as in all things, the more you work with it, the better it's going to sound. Trust me. And you can do that also with your little finger. And your uh, middle finger. Although this riff is going to use the, the the ring finger deal, but you can do it with all these different fingers right here. And the goal is to get the hammer and the pulled off note to sound as loud as if you picked it. Okay. All right. So that's a little quite quick side note to work on your hammer ons and your pull offs. All right. All right. So. Um, Let's cover the main lick. So the main lick is in E. It start, starts in E, and I'm a little out of tune, so let me get myself back in tune here. There we go. All right, good. All right, so um, so we start here on the, what is that, seventh fret here on the low, on the, um, on the A string or the fifth string, depending on how you're calling it. 
And uh, again, we're going to start, uh, our positioning is going to change in our fingers, okay? We're going to start with these three covering these frets like this, all right? Fifth, sixth, and seventh, all right? So um, they're going to start here. And then on the D string, we're going to go up chromatically five, six, seven. So make a sound. Ba -da -da -da. All right, that starts that rip. So ring finger, pointer. So that's a nice little chromatic run that starts the thing. And then you go. All right, so we're going to move around a little bit with the fingers here. So I like putting my middle finger here. Um, some people like move that finger down. That's going to be kind of tricky to move that because the riff goes fast. You put your little finger there too if you want. That's a little awkward. Um, I, I just use the middle finger and then I stretch over, I stretch my pointer to do the next note. All right. So we're going to do this little chromatic. And then the middle finger goes to that original first note there on the seventh fret. And then the pointed finger is going to jump way over here to the G string, all right, on the fifth fret. All right. Wait. <laughs> all right, but now when you get here, there's going to be a little pull. All right, so now... Uh, what I do here is I pull that down. Not, a lot of times I pull upward, but on the pointed finger, I tend to always want to pull down, except for on this low string. But on this string here, you're going to want to pull down. And the best way to do that um, when you're playing this rip. All right, now um, I'm going to just pause it right there. And we're going to look behind because this is going to matter. Okay. I want you to see how I'm holding this. I have the bottom right here okay i have my uh the bottom this part of my finger pointer finger right here anchored to the bottom of the of the neck you're kind of going to want to need this because you're using that as like a fulcrum if you call it if you know if you're physical people it's like a teeter-totter right that middle part that's a fulcrum right so you kind of need that to kind of kind of hold yourself to hold your hand so you can pull down that gives you support and the thumb needs to be up here okay so make sure you're grabbing this thing as correctly as you can because if you're kind of have your arm to your hand too far high up and it's all kind of crazy uh, positions it's going to make this riff a lot harder to do you don't want to do that okay so try and have it so at least you have this part of your hand right here right there wait let me get a good angle right there okay that's latched right there on the bottom of the um of the of the neck all right so let me switch back here all right so that's right there on the bottom of that neck. So that when I do this pull, you see how I'm pulling? I'm pulling. And, now, and note also, this is another thing. I'm using the wrist. I'm not just doing pulling with my finger. All right. That's honestly, that's going to be tough to do, especially when you're playing this lick that fast. Believe it or not, most of your, almost the vast majority of the bends that you do on guitar should be in the wrist. All right. Not exclusively in the fingers the wrist should do most of that work and then the, the fingers just kind of make it happen then after that so when you're when you're bending see how my wrist is going I'll get out we'll get, get away from the sign there all right all right so i'm bending and then i'm uh i land the ring finger right there on the seventh fret on the d string around the fourth string all right, see how I'm doing that? Now, what just happened also, I don't know if you noticed, but the sound stopped. It got muted. Actually, you don't have to mute it. Sorry. Strike that. <laughs> Brief moment of insanity. You just want to... All right, so um, we'll get to that part in a second. So make sure you get this little section. This is this is a. All right, and then we jump up to the seventh and ninth fret. So we're gonna go two notes. 
And then right away, we're going to jump our pointer finger down. All right, so you're going to go, uh, so on this string, you're going to go nine, uh, seven, nine, and then drop down to the fifth, and then do a pull off. Hammer on pull off. So, all right. And if this is new to you, okay, and I'm and I'm doing it, I'm showing it this way on purpose. This is how you can learn when you're learning a your riff. It's also it's oftentimes not best not to just like jump and try to play the whole thing right away, right? I'm just gonna go play the whole thing. I'm breaking it down, right? So what I'm doing here is I, I say work on this part, get that first, right? Well, maybe that's pretty easy, maybe it's not. So you get that, and then you spend some time. <laughs> All right, so that you work on that section there. All right, to try and get that to sound good before you start jumping to the next part. I know we all want to play the whole riff, and it's really awesome that we want to do that. But we also want to play the riff right, right? We don't want to suck. So when we play this for people, we want to sound cool, right? You want this riff to sound cool. So when you're on your own and you're practicing this stuff, and this goes for any riff, any song really, take your time with it and take break it down into sections. Learn, learn the parts of it before you just jump right into it, okay? It's really, really super important that you remember that, and that's what's gonna make you a better player, all right? So um, so anyway, we're going to hear. All right, and then, all right, and, then we, and after we do this little part, and then go back here to the seventh fret D string twice, and then we go back and play this note here, which is a C note, which is the uh, fifth fret of G string. And there's, again, there's a little tiny pull in there. And then we bend back to, then we come back to this note here, all right, which is the A, the ring finger, which is what that, that's the uh, seventh fret there on the D string. <laughs> Right? And then, uh, and then all it's, we're doing here is right? so, so this is two notes on this one, one and two, and then do that, and then you're gonna go down here to the uh, uh, low, the A string, which is the fifth string. Down to the third to fifth string. So it's um, five, seven, three, five, open A. So let's take that from the top. So there's also a little bit of a slide. I think it's a little slide. I think that's what I hear. I could be wrong, but I tend to want to. I put a little slide off this ring finger now as you're going to this this third fret. All right, and then you may just want to play that chord or you want to get out to the note. Okay, so that's the main riff of um, of Black Dog. Now. There is a uh, that it goes into a, another section um, where there's something that's uh, not tagged. It's kind of like added to the beginning, which is in B, and it's it just repeats. All right, and I actually got that also on my um, on my, uh, on my tab here. Let me uh, show you. Um, yeah, there's something up with that. This might be because my computer, my actual laptop screen is messed up, so that's probably what's going on here. But um, it's going to be this part right over here, down here in the bottom, if you can see it. Um, well, we're going to play this, the B part, okay? So there, what's the B part? Okay, well, let's show you the B part. Um, go back to me. Here we go. All right, so um, after you play uh, this part, all right, and then there's the B part. It, it starts out very similar to the, uh, the, the, I call it the A part. This is the B part. I'm sorry, did I say the A part? I meant the E part. The whole thing here. That's that's the E part. So now the B part. All right. So that repeats. That remember that first half of the line we played uh, for the riff. Now we're gonna play just that first half, but we're gonna shift everything down one set of strings. We're gonna play the exact thing, same thing. All right. 
Same thing, except we just moved everything down. But that's going to go three times. I believe it's three times. And now, when I come back, I come back to the ring finger um, because there's a little bit of a break here. I play. I put this finger here, but I always, but I have bent, but I, but I bend back to the ring finger. Do you see how I'm changing fingers for uh, for this note right here? All right, and sorry, right, then that note right here. All right, and then what happens then is it sort of combine. Then it sort of merges into the next half, the back to the E part. So the next time it comes around. Play it, bum, ba, da, da, bum, bum, ba, da, da, bum, ba. and you go right back to the beginning. So, all right. So it's. I found that when I first was learning that, it's kind of a it's kind of a tricky change. Like, but uh, it it sounds easy when you first listen to it. Um, but the, the fingering kind of feels to me kind of, kind of awkward. So that's why it was a little bit difficult for me to, cause I'm, I'm switching my fingers a lot. So when I made that transition, so that finger's there and then I'll bring this ring finger down and then I play the main, the, the E ring. And that, my friends, is a black dog. So, um, any questions? Uh, that's the main riff. Uh, the rest of it's just chords. Um, we can do that another lesson if you want to know the rest. I'm just uh, wanted to give you the the uh, the cool riffs to play. All right. So these tabs are down below. I do have them down there. Um, so you can go back and play this video again if you're watching it later, or if you're watching it live, you can come back to it, especially on YouTube. Uh, if you're on Facebook, you might need to, uh, if, you, if you need to refer back to this, uh, YouTube kind of keeps these videos a little bit longer. So you might want to head over to the 16 Corner YouTube uh, channel and uh, kind of catch more of that. Um, but um, yeah, so, and, and then, you know, I, and also the other thing on YouTube is you can slow things down. So if you need to catch a section of what I was playing, and, and kind of slow it down even further than what I tried to do. Um, you can slow down a section down. You guys should all know how to do that. You click that gear and you go 75% and, and kind of catch that. Um, and, and then play along with the tab. Um, I do have a separate video, I think on black dog on YouTube where I get more, a little more into depth with this. And, um, I don't know if I have heartbreaker. I may not. Um, but either way, it doesn't really matter. You got that right here. And uh, this should be good enough, I hopefully, to help you learn. So now, are there any, does anybody need to know anything live? And if you're, uh, again, like I said, if you're um, watching this afterwards, uh, after the August 13th, um, you know, leave a comment below if there's anything you need to know or if this helped you out, I'd love to know. Or if you've got any suggestions of what to play. Um, so the 16 Corner Library is down below. You can go ahead and sign up for that if you haven't already. And uh, you can get these tabs for these two riffs, and a whole lot more riffs are in there. Um, also, online lessons. I do teach online lessons. Got a very few spots left, believe it or not. It's getting pretty full. Um, but if you need to get a catch a lesson, uh, the first one's free. So um, just click that link below, get some more information, and uh, the first one's free. You can jump on in. I do Zoom calls so we can get on board the first time uh, for like a half hour. We see if this works for you and see if it works for me. I mean... You really got mu not much to lose. Uh, you can sign up for it. You can find uh, on your schedule, find the schedule and see if you can find a time that works for you. Like I said, it is filling up. So there's, there's may not be that many available, but you can go ahead and uh, when you sign in, when you click the link, it'll at, look for a date for you and you can see if you can get in 
at least for a half hour. See if it works for you. See if you even like this. You may not. You may like it. I don't know. But there's only one way to find out. You just jump in and you try. Okay. So um, let me get back to the me <laughs> so I can say goodbye. All right. So thank you so much for uh, for joining me on Six Stream Corner. Um, hope you enjoy these uh, Zeppelin tunes. I'll be back in two weeks, I believe, on Wednesday. I'm going to try and get it on next Wednesday. I know we're on Thursday this time. In two weeks. Uh, next week, I will not be here. To um, I have um, other things to do next weekend. I will be I'll be here, but I won't be here um, to, uh, to to help you out. So thank you so much for joining in. Uh, thanks, Steve, Sean, Scott, Don. I see you guys all at least stop by for a little bit. Uh, thanks for uh, giving me some comments. And um, if there's anything else you guys need need for me to help you out, uh, leave me a message. You can DM me on Facebook, on uh, YouTube. Just uh, leave a comment, and I'll do what I can to get back to you. Um, I have a lot of fun showing you guys these licks is apparently this seems to be the best thing. So, uh, but I like to give you technique. You can always learn technique, uh, while you're learning riffs always. And that's how I teach. That's, that's how I do it. You know, give you licks, give you a riff and we're going to learn how to bend. We're going to learn how to use uh, this finger. We're going to learn all these different positioning in our fingers to make it be a better player. So that when you jam, when you're rocking with your buddies or you're working on your own, or you want to sit and want to impress the girlfriend or whatever, uh, you can play it and not suck, right? We don't want to suck. We want to play good. We want to sound good. All right. So I'm here to help you guys out. Uh, thanks again for joining in. And I guess I'm going to have to call it because I'm taking up bandwidth here at the house. <laughs> so uh, rock on guys. I'll talk to you in a couple of weeks. I do have more videos coming up on YouTube. So stay, stay uh, alert for that as well. And uh, also on Facebook, we've got um, Rachel and I, my wife and me are put, coming up. We got a couple more music videos coming up. So uh, stay tuned for that as well. All right. We're trying to, to, to stay involved and, and I uh, just have a lot of fun doing some music, right? Cause Hey, music, music is life, man. Music is awesome. All right, guys, take it easy. And guys and girls, thanks for joining in and we'll see you later. Rock on. <laughs>